We got to get into this dynamite report because I got a lot to talk about. Jay Lethal beat Orange Cassidy. It's a good match. Orange Cassidy, every time he's in there, he delivers. Jay Lethal's awesome. The uh, worked over Orange's leg, the entire match's stem. And uh, finally, at the end, he uh, went for the figure four. It was countered. Orange cradled him, went for the orange punch. Jay hit the lethal injection and pinned him. It's very good. And then Sanjay Sotnam came out. They were going to break Orange's leg. Who should make the save but the best friends in Wardlow? And Wardlow will be defending the TNT title against uh, Jay Lethal at the Battle of the Belt show, which is taped Friday and will air Saturday. Adam Cole comes down to the ring. This dude's so over. People are going nuts for him. Adam Cole, baby, the whole nine yards. Gets in the ring with the Young Bucks and Red Dragon. There's five of them. There's a six-man tournament coming up. And he does this big speech about loyalty, loyalty to the Bucks. And he says, you know, we got this uh, trios match coming up. And, uh, you know, Kyle O'Reilly's not cleared. And you guys don't seem to be choosing Bobby Fish as your partner. And so uh, so you just got, you can't be in the tournament. The Bucks are like, what? And he goes, uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. You won't physically be capable of being in the tournament. And Red Dragon turns on the Bucks, and they stomp a mud hole in him. They're beating him down. The place is going nuts. And all of a sudden, they go even more nuts when Hangman's music hits. Hangman hits the ring. He runs wild. The, 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 uh, the uh, heels flee. And he offers his hand to Matt. And Matt shakes his hand. And then Hangman leaves. So it is still up in the air. What does this mean for the six-man belts? What does it mean for Kenny Omega, who is also coming back here very soon? We got twists and turns coming up. We had a great John Moxley promo. He don't care who wins Chris Jericho and Wheeler Yuta. The loser is going to lose, and the winner is going to die next week in the championship match. We had Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter versus Tony Storm and Thunder Rosa. It's a very good match. The crowd went crazy for it. Huge chance for Britt and Thunder Rosa. And Tony Storm killed everybody with the uh, ass attack in the corner. And finally she goes for it again, but she accidentally hits her own partner. And then uh, Jamie Hayter pins Tony Storm to set up Jamie Hayter versus Thunder Rosa. And they gave Jamie Hayter a lot of babyface-style spots. So I think when her and Britt split, she's going to be the babyface here in this deal. And I don't think she's going to win the title, but the the reality is that this battle of the belts, I mean, you need a title change here and there. And I don't think it's impossible because there's a lot of things you can do if, if Thunder loses it to Jamie Hayter and then Britt Baker's upset that Jamie Hayter has the belt. And there's a lot of ways you can go, but this is a very good match. Crowd was hot. We had uh, Sammy Guevara and Tyre getting married. Eddie Kingston wants a match with Sammy at the pay-per-view. Powerhouse Hobbs comes out. Taz announces that Team Taz is no more. Powerhouse has a new entrance. He comes out and he kills this Ren Jones. And then Ricky Starks' music hits and the place goes crazy. And Ricky tears on his down to the ring. He's attacking Hobbs. He yells and shoves the referee out of the way, but that's just enough for Hobbs to grab him and put him through the ring with a spine buster. And then he just scowls and walks away. I thought this was awesome. And that match is going to be great coming up at, at All Out. We had uh, Miro promo. He's still conflicted. Seems like it's going to take a while to get unconflicted. Darby Allen promo about the coffin match next week with Brody King. Christian beat Matt Hardy. Somebody had a sign that said something like, I, I played this in No Mercy 99 or something. This guy had been around a while. And they worked very hard. It was fine. And finally, Matt goes for an elbow drop through a table. Christian moves. Matt crashes through the table. Christian tosses him in the ring. Kill switch pins him. And then after the match, Luchasaurus's music hits. And he comes down. He distracts Christian. Jungle Boy hits the ring. Christian runs for his life. We got to do four more weeks of this before the pay-per-view, so... You'll be seeing a lot of that. Daniel Garcia challenged American Dragon to a rematch. If he can ever come back, he's another Dragon Slayer. That's probably also an all-out match. Ethan Page's in the ring. Very upset that he's never on TV, even though he's been on TV regularly, complaining about never being on TV. Out comes Stokely Hathaway. Stokely gives him his business card. It looks like uh, 
Looks like he's joining up with him. So Dan Lambert might be history, at least for the time being. We had 2.0 and Anna J doing a promo backstage. He attacked the security guy. Then we had this dumpster match. The Acclaimed and yeah, the Gun Club. We talked about the finish. The Acclaimed won. They tossed the Gun Club into the dumpster. They pushed the dumpster off the edge, fell to its doom. You know what I liked about this? Before the match started, there was a brawl. And then Max Caster grabs the mic and he demands they play his music so he could have accompaniment, which made it much better. And man, he had a line about Vince McMahon's retirement that this place ate up. It was a good rap. It's a good match. Fun match. Thankfully, nobody got hurt in that crazy dumpster spot. Rampage Friday. We don't need old Fauntleroy because it's live. So no matter how I read this, it's not a spoiler because it's live. John Moxley will face Mance Warner. If Mance Warner beats John Moxley, he gets a shot at the AEW Interim Championship. Maybe I should have had Fauntleroy help with this one. Madison Rain debuts, and Swerve in Our Glory will defend the tag team titles in a street fight against Tony Nese and Josh Woods. Don't yell at me for how I read these matches. They're all live. Next week is Battle of the Belts 3. Claudio versus Takeshita. Thunder Rosa versus Jamie Hayter for the title. And uh, Wardlow and Jay Lethal. All title matches on Battle of the Belts tape Friday. If you want to know what happens, you can uh, you can read the spoilers on the front page. Then Quake by the Lake, Darby on Brody, King Coffin match, Lucha Brothers versus Rush and Andrade in a tornado tag, Jade Cargill open challenge. That's interesting. And uh, John Moxley versus, as we were about to find out, Chris Jericho, who beat Wheeler Yuta in a really good main event. Wheeler Yuta's great. Jericho did a great job trying to make him look like a guy. I don't think there was actually any spot where people actually believed that Wheeler Yuta could beat Chris Jericho. But the best the best spot was uh, he went for the Judas effect, and Yuta ducked and hit him with his uh, seatbelt, mousetrap, whatever they call that cradle, that he was uh, taught by Chuck Taylor. And uh, that was the closest we got to convincing people that Yuta could win. But then Jericho grabs him. And uh, and switches not to a Walls of Jericho, but to the Lion Tamer. He puts his knee right on this poor guy's head, bends him backwards like a pretzel. This dude taps out. And it was perfect. It was perfect. Because the story is that John Moxley doesn't want the sports entertainer. He doesn't want Chris Jericho. He wants Lionheart. And so Jericho putting on the Lion Tamer and beating his protege with the Lion Tamer via submission... He beat the submission guy via submission with the lion tamer. It's it perfect. And then afterwards, uh, uh, Moxie came out, uh, chased him out of the ring, and then Jericho did the promo vowing that Lionheart would return, and he promised to stretch John Moxley and win the title. I like this show a lot. And you know what else I liked, Mike, before you have any comments? You know what I liked? What's that? I like that I did that whole Dynamite review with a CD in my pants. And you know what? I didn't slice my junk off. It didn't break. It did not prevent me from doing my job. Was that a walk to remember? What are you talking about? What is that DVD you have there? Actually, it's the Star Wars Last Jedi read-along. It's Paisley's. You know what I think of this? What's that? I can read. Anyway, what were your thoughts on this show? <laughs> well, a couple of things. Um, I don't think Daniel Garcia ever needed Chris Jericho to get out this side of his personality. I don't think he ever needed to be part of that group. I mean, we'll see how it goes with him as part of that group. I mean, it's okay, but I don't think he was needed. But I think Anna J for sure, I think she needs Chris Jericho. And... It's. I know it's been two weeks now. A lot of people didn't like her promo. I actually liked it, you know, a couple weeks ago where she's talking about choking people out. That seems like it's going to be part of her thing. Her coming out of her shell, I think, is needed with the Jericho Appreciation Society, especially having 
<laughs> Matt Menard's head and, and whatever you know, whatever they call Angelo Parker, Cool Hand Luke or whatever, him over there. I actually like that a lot. Stokely Hathaway going on a recruiting mission here. We've seen some wackiness with Jade and everything that goes with that. But him becoming a legitimate manager, bringing in Lee Moriarty, bringing in Ethan Page, maybe bringing in Scorpio Sky. You know, those three guys fit together perfectly if you look at – you know what they are so that could be a direction they could go bottom line is i like stokely a lot miro and malachi black that yin and yang with the the heaven and hell thing and and you know forces working together i like it a lot you know uh, miro for a guy who doesn't wrestle much on tv and is just basically vignettes with him being conflicted and talking i mean he's great he is great doing that any him, the way he came into AEW with how they pulled the 180 and made him what everybody wanted him to be, and he's got something that he can sink his teeth to, into, I love it. And so the stuff going on with Malachi, I like a lot. Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks are great. I, I talked about Ricky Starks on the solo show I did a couple of weeks ago. He's a star no matter how you cut it. He'll be a star. If he wasn't wrestling, he's great. And Powerhouse Hobbs is the future, one of the pieces of, the, of that company's future. Jamie Hayter, I think, is great, and I think – her taking the title off of Thunder Rosa, you can do a lot more with that with Britt Baker and you know how they've gone at each other, and it probably is a good thing to keep Britt Baker tethered to Jamie Hayter because she was—I don't want to say the best thing in that match, but she was really the standout piece for me. So that's uh, that's a dynamite. Hey, have I reviewed NXT 2.0 yet? Try to get going on that. Oh, we did it yesterday, man. You want to talk about ratings? Luchasaurus is yet to touch Christian since his turn. Do you think him and Christian are in cahoots and Luchasaurus will for real turn on Jungle Boy at the pay-per-view? Dude, I came up with that idea last week. I don't know if that's what they're going to do, but they spent they spent well over a year building it. I find it hard to believe it's going to be blown off in four weeks and we move on to something else. I think that they could very easily... Because, you know, Luchasaurus was never conflicted when he went with, with Christian. So I could easily see Jungle Boy getting screwed by Luchasaurus. Then you go with Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus at the next pay-per-view. And then you built up to the second match with Christian that Jungle Boy ultimately wins. And you got you got six, eight months out of this feud. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if that's the direction they went. This is how the show begins, really. Oscar does a back kick. Camera cut. She does a back fist. Camera cut. She starts to run. Camera cut. She hits a hip attack. Camera cut. She drops to her knees. Camera cut. She throws a kick. Camera cut. She stands up and screams. Camera cut to people brawling on the floor. I was furious. Do you understand? I wanted to shut the show off and not watch anymore. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.